Yo, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. Today we're gonna be covering over an updated version of Ancient Box. Now that being said, there's a lot of cool things that have happened to this deck in the past little bit. And while I think the version, you could always change it up, I do wanna give a shout out to Dasha Necrosova uh, for playing this deck at an online tournament. They came uh, one of the top placements of the Ditto Forces number one online event. I really like their list, so I'm gonna be covering it in this video today. It's a little bit different than the one that Vulcan Turtle covered a few weeks back, so I hope you enjoy it and maybe it inspires you to play this deck for your next event. That being said, we will be covering over the deck list, the gameplay, and the strategy of the deck, so stay tuned for all that. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into that list. So this is what we got going on for Ancient Box. Very similar to what we saw at the Temporal Forces pre-release with the Roaring Moon, the Flutter Main, and the Coridon. But we've added in Roaring Moon EX to have a thicker punch when it comes down to knocking out some of those big Pokemon. I think that this has got to be one of the better builds for the deck. So as we kind of go through it, um, I'll explain all the cards available in this deck list in the strategy f uh, section of this video. And really, if you want to copy and paste this list from our description, you can import it right into PTCG Live and you can let us know if there's any cards that you are missing. Um, if you're missing any cards, pick them up from our sponsors at Kfabe or PTCG L Store. Both those links are available in the description, including some discount codes. Let's jump into the strat. So while we are an Ancient Box deck, we do have a few Pokemon that might stick out more than others. Our main goal is to use Roaring Moon, the baby one, to be using Vengeance, Vengeance Fletching, that's a tough name, to do 70 plus 10 more damage for each Ancient card in your discard pile. That's not just Pokemon cards, it's any card with an Ancient badge, such as Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, or Evening Earthen Vessel. That being said, as we're building things up, we might want to use something like Coridon to use Primordial Beatdown to do 30 times the amount of ancient Pokemon we have in play. We can easily power up these Pokemon with Professor Seda's Vitality and accelerating our energy to our various Pokemon. If we want to ever dig more cards into our deck and get some cards into our discard pile for that Roaring Moon, we have access to Explorer's Guidance to dig through and really make sure that we have enough outs to do whatever we want. Earthen Vessel allows us to search the various energies that we need, but we could also use something like Flutter Mane that doesn't cost any specific amount of energies to use Hex Hurl or just use it to stop our opponent or slow them down with Midnight Fluttering. Big Roaring Moon EX is really going to be our answer against some Pokemon like Charizard EX. We don't really have a way to hit for those huge numbers with Vengeance Fletching, and there's certainly going to be a plateau where it's going to be we might have to discard too much. We might only get one really, really big attack at the end of the game. That being said, Roaring Moon EX might help us get there with its frenzied gouging attack or even Calamity Storm. Radiant Greninja allows us to kind of pivot through our deck, continuously get cards into the discard pile, and allows us to fuel our Professor Seda's Vitality. A lot of those cards allow us to fuel Professor Seda's Vitality, such as Earthen Vessel, Ultra Ball, and even Explorer's Guidance itself. A lot of the cards in this deck are just going to be meant to getting more cards into the discard pile so we can always continuously attach energies, do more damage, and one thing you might want to note is we play the Prime Catcher in this deck because Gus is a little bit more important than drawing cards, however Awakening Drum might end up being the better A spec in this deck because it is an Ancient Box deck. Well, only time will tell and I'll decide that as I continuously test, but there might not just be one A spec for every single deck. Let's take this baby Roaring Moon deck out for a spin on the ladder, see exactly how it goes. If you have any suggestions for this list, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's get it. So we're going to head and calling the coin flip. I think we ended up calling Tails and our opponent won the coin flip. We're hoping that we get to go second um, so we can use Professor Seda's Vitality on our first turn if that's at all a possibility. In this case, uh, I guess we'll have to figure out how it ends up playing out. But right now, I'm not entirely sure. Our opponent will go first, so that works out great for us. We really could just attach an energy on our first turn and be really good for that uh, turn to attack. Not necessarily a great, uh, great turn for us. But we'll see whatever our opponent's doing. Like, we might be able to get a quick knockout here or something else like that. Um... Could go for something else. Uh, I'm trying to think about like what would be great. Like we could use get Dark Patch going out. I think it's probably best if we start with Flutter Main, uh, just because we might want to slow our opponent down a little bit with Midnight Fluttering. So if our opponent's playing a Lost Zone box deck, we could shut off their Comfey. If they were playing an Arc, uh, something like like we're shutting off their Carefree um, Countenance, 
Now, this is something like an Arc deck might end up like having a tough time against. We'll have to see how it plays out. But um, we'll 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 see how it, we'll see how it plays out here. I think uh, okay, just a dark energy to Bidoof. Seems like a decent sign. I don't know what Bidoof's doing here, but maybe we'll be able to find something. Explorer's guidance doesn't necessarily help us. We're gonna use Nest Ball, search our deck for a Radiant Greninja, and we'll end up going for concealed cards. Uh, I think that seems like a good start to this um, play, and we'll see what we end up drawing. We got a nest ball. Um, not sure entirely what I want, but I'm gonna go up and use Explorer's Guidance. I'm gonna grab an Earthen Vessel and probably just gonna end up grabbing a Roaring Moon. I'd like to have some dark energies in our discard pile. I'm gonna probably end up discarding a Coridon. We don't need to worry about that too, too much. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Dark and a Fighting. In order for me to have more energies in play, I'd like to put a fighting energy on the active. In case we draw into a uh, Professor Status, we could attack with Hex Hurl. That being said, we're probably just going to head and put down this other Roaring Moon and pass for our turn. I could use Dark Patch, but I might want to use Dark Patch on this Roaring Moon EX, and we'll have to see whatever our opponent gets during their turn. Uh, the fact that they're playing Dark Energy is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of Dark decks play both Barrel and Dark Energies. Maybe a control deck? We do have a bunch of Professor Sedas, so we'll have to see how it plays out. Mildly annoying to have the energy on the Flutter Main removed. Some kind of really interesting control deck from our opponents. Um, we don't need a lot of energies to really like maneuver here. I mean, you can see we're already building up. We have one, two... Um, three, four into our loss zone, or into our discard pile. One, two, three, four. We're already hitting for 110. Oh, a Gengar deck. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what Gengar is really going to be doing here. It's going to draw, and they're already down to uh, zero, so they're just going to use Industrial. I thought they used Industrial already, but... See, uh, discard and energy. So yeah, really just a discard and energy kind of deck. That's kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that. This might actually work out better. Our hand kind of sucked, to be honest. Yeah, I'm totally fine with uh, getting a Professor Sedas. And there's a Bidoof. I'd like to Prime Catcher the Babiro if we get an opportunity to do so. Um... Let's go ahead and start off with using both Professor Sedas. We're probably going to have to end up discard attaching an energy to the Flutter Main, and I'm going to put an energy here, see what we end up getting. We did get the Prime Catcher, so right now we currently have one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm not sure if our opponent could just like stick us in the active with anything. I don't think they have, like, it's not like it's block lax, so might have a little bit more success if we go for like um concealed cards pitching an energy away we haven't attached for our turn yet let's go ahead here and attach for our turn i think i really want to go for the prime catcher right now so i'm gonna go prime catcher right there and we do have enough to do flengeant vengeance fletching uh so i am just gonna go ahead and score the knockouts um might lose a lot of energies, but we still have all the Professor Sedas right now. And maybe that's the only Babero that our opponent has. Not really sure what we're playing against, though. The boss's top deck with, er, from our uh, prize card is crazy. Because we could focus after their other Babero if they aren't able to get too much else going on. Crushing Hammer, please get Tails. Let's go! I guess they also have Mysterious Beam, which is kind of an interesting... Um, attack. They've gone through a lot of those crushing hammers too. Rare candy. Maybe they play Relicanth. From your hand, uh, move an energy from your opponent's act to one of their bench Pokemon. So I guess they could just move a bunch of energies towards our uh, Various bench Pokemon, uh, like Radiant Greninja, would probably be really annoying. Like, we could actually run out of energies when it comes down to it if they just use tricky steps. 
Um, the Radiant Greninja is not going to be particularly helpful for us. But right now they have uh, zero cards in their hand. So what I'd like to do is just go boss's orders, bring up their barrel immediately. And before I do anything else, I don't want to have all my energies in play. I'd also like to have Ancient Booster Energy Capsule just so they can't knock us out, knowing that their cap is 160. Um, I'd really just like to go after them with uh, Vengeance, Vengeance Fletching, and hopefully they end up getting nothing from this, and then we're able to just attack them again. Uh, that'd be quite helpful for us. And they're probably just going to set up their Gengar. Um, maybe? Okay. See what they top decked. I really hope that it's just a pass. And we need to be doing like around 160 damage in order to get this knockout. I'd like to uh, use Pokestop to try to rip some cards from our deck that are just ancient cards. That kind of helped. I would have liked to get some more Explorer's Guidance. Um, but that's fine. We'll decide how we're end up able to getting it with uh, Pokegear. There's a Seda's. And I think I'm probably just going to end up using the Professor Seda's. Uh, I'd rather have an extra energy than not, so let's go ahead and go Professor Seda's Vitality. Going to put a Dark Energy here, and I'm just going to get the one back because I'd like them in my discard pile. So this is now hitting for 150. I can now get a couple extra cards in my discard pile. So let's go ahead and go for... Um, I think I'm going to just end up doing this. I don't need any more energies in my hand. Or actually, I don't need any more uh, Ancient Booster Energy Castles. That seems fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a Roaring Moo. Uh, I'm going to grab a Fluttermane. I'm going to pitch away the Fluttermane. And I'm going to grab some energies here. We can't hit the 310. Like, could I knock out with... Um, Maybe I get the knockout with the Roaring Moony X. That might actually be the play here. I think the Roaring Moony X is actually way more exciting, so I'm going to go for that. Actually, I can't get the knockout because I'd have to retreat, and I'd have to get another energy. Okay, sweet. Good to know. Um, I'm just going to go Vengeance Fletching. That's fine. Depending on what our opponent does, they might just pass again. That certainly isn't going to help them. They have a lot of really interesting cards, though. Prime Catcher could find us in a tough situation where we just don't have enough energies to make it happen. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I don't think we have that many energies left. Uh, we could probably just hard retreat, which is probably our best answer. So I'm going to use uh, Professor Seda's Vitality, putting a Fighting Energy here, putting a Dark Energy here. Uh, I guess we got the, <laughs> the damage from that. We're going to go ahead and retreat, sending up our Roaring Moon. And I think what I want to do here next is just go for Vengeance Fletching. Um, probably too many energies on that Roaring Moon. It's it's interesting when you're playing against these Control-esque decks. Um, I'm hoping the Pokestop just continues to hurt them instead of help them, because things can get really spooky from here. Yeah, they're just going to concede. Um, we got a pretty decent start, and we were able to hit those right numbers. Had I played a little bit differently, we could have got a knockout with Roaring Moon X, but it certainly could have been an option if we got to that. Again, control decks are weird, but Ancient Box is uh, certainly a powerful enough deck to keep up with the metagame. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about this deck, a little bit more than we've had previously on the channel. It's certainly an interesting archetype, but playing against Gengar is going to be an interesting matchup either way. Um, Ancient Box is certainly going to be one of the decks. Is it a top 10 deck? I'm not sure. Is it a top 15 deck? 
probably. Um, I think Ancient Box is probably towards the bottom of the top 10, but maybe um, while I'm out traveling between Orlando and EUIC, we'll find out to see if this is currently one of the best decks in formats. Again, this is all recorded beforehand, so I hope you enjoy these videos, and I'll catch up with all y'all real soon. Peace out, and have a great one. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content watches what we have going on every single day every single week even from time to time and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the pokemon tcg community so if you haven't already be sure to give this video a like subscribe to the channel and even leave a comment to help boost the youtube algorithm that being said we'll catch you with our next video thanks again take it easy